I don't clear. I'm not awakened to it. I'm not alert. I don't pay any attention. The sermon just goes on and on, and that's my time to check out. Now you're saying there's some sort of consciousness. We got to be conscious. We got to be awake. We got to be alert. We've got to be aware. What is this all about? It is a Christ consciousness, that we have the mind of Christ, that we're awakened to the very understanding that this anointing awaits us, this awakening awaits us, this enlightenment is there for us. It's waiting for us to be conscious of it. That means to be aware of it. And a lot of times we go through the world in an unconscious state. We're not really aware of all the things. How many times you drive down a road and think, I never really noticed Maybe that stop sign, or I didn't notice that speed limit sign. Officer, I wasn't conscious of it. I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't alert to it. And so suddenly something brings about an awareness, a change, that we're going, I see that sign. I note it. I am aware of it at all times. Jesus says constantly that he is inviting us to this kind of awareness you know, there was a time in my life when I would say I wasn't aware of certain things. There are people in the world who would say I wasn't aware of certain things. Yet Jesus, who's been referred to as the master teacher, a rabbi, did his best to make you and I aware. Wow. He did his best. Oh, come on. Let's give Jesus some credit, really. As a master teacher, really, honestly. Yet we so often ignore all of his efforts. I've been working with you. I've been teaching. I've been trying to do everything I can. The spirit, this Christ consciousness wants to be at work in you. But we have to open our lives to it and say, Christ consciousness, awakening the Christ come into my life. Awaken me that I might see and understand that I may not do uh, those things of my own self, but the power of Christ, this awakening within me, enables me to do great and wonderful things. You see, Jesus understood that there was more than just this physical world because he understood the source. He understood where he came from. He understood God. He called God the very source of his being and tried to teach us the very same, that the source of your being is the divine presence, You've come from that place, created in that image. You are that divine child of God. You've been referred to this over and over again in teaching after teaching. He understood where he came from, where the source was. Isn't it interesting that sometimes we hear news, gossip, stories, and we want to, where's the source? Where's this coming from? Where do we hear this? And we want to check out the source, right? Because we want to know if the source is credible. We want to know if this is really true. Did it come from that source? And when I understand the source, I understand truly what's being communicated, right? So it is when we understand the divine source, when we understand God, what God is, the unfolding of infinite wisdom. When we understand that divine source that's there, something changes in our life. There becomes that Christ consciousness, a power within us. Now, Jesus knew this power. He knew this presence. And he understood what was available to him that was working in him, through him, around him, and for him. How important that is. That we also awaken what is available to us. What is available? Because sometimes we think we're walking in this world all alone. And we want to sing those old choruses, Why Me? And nobody knows the trouble I've seen. And on goes the list of those things that we think we're in this world all by ourselves, And we're, that we're somehow powerless. I'm here to tell you today that God didn't place you on this earth powerless and void of the uh, wonderful opportunity to tap into everything that is available and awaiting you. Until we understand what is available, we'll never really use it, right? We don't know what's out there. We don't know what's really uh, there for us to have access to. So how important it is that Jesus was trying to get across to us that there is a power, a presence that is available to you to tap into. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself, but that divine power at work, that divine presence at work, that's what's working. 
For when you see me, you see the source. You see the Father. You see it all at work within. When you see me, you're seeing something that's not just me, this human flesh and bones, but you see the divine power and presence. How wonderful it is when we understand what's available to us, that there is a divine power and presence, that we might look to one another and see not just human flesh and bones, but the light that we sung about today, that we're walking in the light. See a humba, as that song went on to say, that we're walking, marching in, moving in this wonderful light because we understand what is truly available to us. Jesus' is teaching is inviting us to understand that we're only as strong as the level of our understanding. We emphasize this over and over again. That your faith, your presence in this world, the dynamic influence that you're going to have is only going to be to the level of your understanding, to the degree of your ability to uh, be aware, to comprehend, to be conscious, to be awakened. So it's so important that we seek understanding in the journey of our life. That we come to this place where we go, now I understand. And we have these wonderful light bulb moments, those flashes that go on in our mind where suddenly we're like, oh, I get it. I understand. Jesus has been teaching and teaching and teaching, trying to get disciples to awaken. Trust me, disciples journeyed with Jesus for three years and still didn't get it. Some of us are still struggling over and over again uh, all of our lifetime, and we're in our late years, and we're struggling to get it. But it's always offered to us to say there are these wonderful aha moments where you can understand, and that understanding is the oil in your lamp. Yes, this biblical illustration for us, as Jesus talked about, keep your lamp burning bright. Keep your light burning bright. How do we keep that light burning bright? Well, it gives us this illustration of keeping your lamp full of oil. And that oil is your level of understanding. Don't go through your spiritual life with questions and going, I don't get it, I don't get it. Ask, seek, search, get to a class. We have sometimes five classes a week here. And in each one of those classes, there are opportunities for you to ask questions. You need not go through a, your day without, with all these questions and wondering, I don't quite get this. I don't understand. How does this dynamic power work in my life? I don't understand why I'm struggling. I don't understand why I'm going through these difficulties. I don't understand why I feel all alone. I don't understand all these issues. Come and ask. Seek and you shall find. Because it's there in these wonderful classes that we offer you the opportunity to dialogue. Trust me, sometimes on Sunday morning, I wish we could just throw the whole program out the window and just say, who's got a question here? Let me try to answer it for you because what's most important is your spiritual growth and development. It's not that we finished everything on the bulletin in the order of service or that we did so many things. Did we check off the list of things on a Sunday morning context? That's not what's really, really important. It's not, did we go through this ritual? Did we bow? Did we lift our hands? Did we shake a tambourine or whatever it may be in our original background? It's not that. It's coming to the level of awakening that's so crucial for your lives. So I really want to invite you to understand that we are called to be know-it-alls. Mm -hmm. Now that may kind of strange, but let me define that for you. Meaning that we are called on a journey of learning to know it all. Uh-huh, that's right. Coming to that place where we say, there's more to learn. There's more out there. There's more for me. I understand that this spiritual life could be deeper, richer, better than what I'm living right now. Can you imagine that? You think it's good now. I'm here to tell you, it only gets better. It gets better. It gets better yet. If we're willing to apply our lives, let me tell you this, your spiritual life can be this dynamic force and the choice is yours. So we're called to be those know-it-alls. Not in the context like me. Years ago when I graduated from seminary, I was a preacher's kid, grew up in the church. I thought I was one of those, I know it all. You know, one of those things that says, I kind of know it all. You know, I've been in church some of my peers in seminary, you know, they just started. I thought, oh, honey, I've been there, done that. I got the T-shirt. You know, oh, I've been there. You know, I grew up in the church. I was right there. My father was a pastor. I got all the insights. Bam, reality hit. I got into my first ministry, and I realized 
I don't know nothing. <laughs> Not anything, nothing. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I felt when I realized when you really got out there and the call to work on your spiritual life, there was so much more, so much more to learn that we become these eternal students because uh, sometimes we know just enough of something to get ourselves in trouble, you know? I traveled to, to Europe and I knew just enough French to get myself in trouble. Yeah, just when I thought I had mastered the certain phrases, like, can you tell me where the bathroom is? I was really ordering chicken soup. And I really didn't realize what I was saying, and there was all this confusion, and how crazy it can be, because I knew just enough to get myself into trouble. And people kept looking at me like, what is it this crazy uh, American boy is asking? You know, this is just out of line. Sometimes in our spiritual lives, we know just enough, just enough about our faith and our religion to get ourselves into trouble because we don't know how it all fits together. We hear a little snippet there, a little snippet there. We think, oh, that's enough. Oh, I understand the basics. Oh, that's all I need in life. And yet we get out there when, we, when the rubber hits the road, when we're really faced with the challenge, we go, wait a minute. I, I guess I need to know more. I need to understand more. I need to comprehend more. I need to be one of those that I am endeavoring to know it all to know that there's more out there and not be the know-it-all, but being the someone who's seeking to know even more. For what did Jesus teach us? Jesus said that men, women, all of us, we cannot live by bread alone. Okay? Here it is for you who are gluten-free. And you're, you know, this is your passage of Scripture. We can't live by bread alone. Uh, we've got work. It's a verification of gluten-free spirituality. <laughs> it is not about the physical bread that Jesus is talking about. It's just calling us to this to understand that we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, out of the mouth of good, out of the mouth of love, out of the mouth of grace. That's what we live by. That's what nurtures and strengthens us. We may think that we live and exist simply by all the physical things that we take in. Food, breakfast, lunch, dinner. We think about that's what's sustaining our bodies and keeping us going. But what we have to understand is that we don't exist in this world just because of the physical. There's a spiritual realm that's so important that we understand. That we are living and feeding the soul with the truth. This is something that's added to our diet. And that is our spiritual life. Our spiritual living, how important that is that we live it out. For if we live by the physical alone, what happens is we find something's missing. And we're those kind of people who are always searching. Always seeking but never finding because we're looking for it all in the wrong places. We're not understanding that that which we've really been seeking all along is in the spiritual realm. And sometimes we're thinking, I need more of the physical. I need more of the physical. My life is unfulfilled, so let me go on some adventure trip. My life is unfulfilled, and I don't really feel like I am fulfilling purpose, so let me go out and buy a new house, buy a new car, do something. We go through midlife crisis, questioning and wondering, what about our life and its purpose, and where do I fit? Yet when we understand that there is another component, it's the, fit, the spiritual. We add that. We understand that we don't live in the physical alone. We live in the spiritual as well. How important it is. For Jesus began to teach it over and over again. And the classic phrase that we hear is, you must be born again. Understanding what Jesus was talking about is meaning saying that you have to have a fresh start, a new beginning in your life. There comes a point when you have to change your thinking that you welcome a new thought because you may have been going this way and you're finding out that I cannot do all things or anything by myself. And suddenly there's a new thought, a new way of looking that says I am born again, renewed in a new direction that says now this change brings about and understanding that with the Christ awareness, the consciousness, the awareness of this power, this enlightened within me, I go and move in a new direction. I'm born again in this wonderful process. Jesus explained it with greater depth in saying, you must be reborn or born again of the water and of the spirit. I'd like to bring this out for us to understand a little clearer. Water is a wonderful metaphor all through the metaphysical understanding of Scripture that is symbolizing thought or consciousness. 
So the first thing Jesus says is we must be born of the water, of awakened thought, conscious. Because let me tell you, you can go to church all your life and never be conscious of all the spiritual things that God has for you. You can go to church. You can be a preacher's kid like myself. You can grow up in the church all your life. You can think that you go through seminary and you know it all. And unless you've got a consciousness and awakening and awareness to what's out there, you'll find out that you have just, your thought life is filled with all of the how to do it then from the textbooks instead of how to live it from the actual inner experience of your life. Water is inviting us to be immersed in it, in our baptisms, right? So when we look at this beautiful symbolism, immersed in a consciousness, immersed in an awakening, for the baptism experience was typified of that rebirth, that awakening, that new experience in your life. The old washed away, and behold, all things become new. Do we understand that kind of concept and how it's been unfolded through a scripture and Christian teaching? It's this understanding that we first and foremost must be immersed truly immersed in this wonderful awakening, a consciousness, so immersed that says, I begin to awaken to things I never really thought of. I begin to understand possibilities I didn't even think were, were they really possible for me? I begin to awaken to stuff because spiritual insight and wisdom is there for you. It's there for you to reach out to to seek, to grasp, for the Spirit will lead you and guide you and give you insights and will show you all things if you're immersed, awakened to such a level of consciousness. We have to be immersed in this wonderful, shall we say, water of our recognition of this pure Spirit. And let me tell you this. We look at baptisms, and I want to tell you it's not about the amount of water in the physical context, but it's about the amount of water in the thought context or the immersion of your heart. I baptized as a young minister on the edges of the Sahara Desert, the Turkana tribe, a tribe of nomadic camel herders who would go from one oasis to another. And there we were at a ministry site waiting for the camel herders to come and to bring their camels to water uh, to be care, to care for them as herd, herders or shepherds, shall we say, of camel herds. And there we would share with them the good news. And there were many who would say, can we be baptized as we wash away the old and welcome the new? Oh, how beautiful. But here we are on the edge of the desert where we had a limited amount of water. Not even enough water to share for everyone to drink, really, let alone to bathe or to totally immerse in. You see, it's not about the amount of water for our spiritual lives in the physical context. It is the amount of the immersion of the heart or the consciousness. Because I could baptize you in ocean after ocean after ocean. And still, if it's not an immersion of the consciousness of your heart or the awakening of your heart, it doesn't matter. The old is not released. You are not renewed. You are just in that limbo stage where you went through a ritual to make your mother happy or to make someone else happy or to try to find your own happiness in this world instead. And the key thing is immersion. And I was a pastor for 39 years. I've had the opportunity to do several baptism experiences with different people. And some of them have come to me and said, you know, pastor, I just had my hair done. Do I have to go all the way? Can I just like dip? And you know, this is expensive too. Uh, Oh, honey, it's immersion. It's all the way or none. What? My, my good hair? What? I'm going to go under and I'm going to go, oh, and it's... Honey, let go of the hair. You know, it's about the immersion of the heart. Pastor, do I have to let my nose go underwater? You see, I'm not very good. I can't swim. Do I have to go all the way? Can I, can I just plug your nose and I'll bring you down, hold you down till you promise to tithe. <laughs> and then I'll bring you back up. Don't worry. Don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Do I have to go all the way under? Of course, because that's the metaphor of that immersion in our lives. And too often we're not willing to be immersed. 
So this is simply this outward sign, this baptism experience of an inward conviction and a belief that says, I am willing to let everything go. Immerse me in this wonderful consciousness and awareness that the divine power of God is at work in my life and I want to be dipped all the way under. I mean, leave nothing out, not even a strand of my fabulous hairdo. Let it all go under because I want to experience that to its fullness. I want to have this wonder of immersed consciousness. Because let me tell you, once we become so immersed, we lose a material pers perspective. Once you become so immersed in this wonderful spiritual life, you begin to let go of the limitations that have been holding you back all along. Where you keep saying, oh, I can't, it's not possible, it'll never work. I don't have the funds, this isn't going to work for me. We're so immersed that we change our whole outlook. We begin to, be, begin to be acting then from our true beliefs or our understanding. And we take good care then of these inner thoughts, these inner ingredients that we put into the mix of our mind. Because quite often, if we are so immersed in the spiritual consciousness, then the physical doesn't even matter, right? So let's not bring it into the mix. Let's not pour it into the soup. Let's not stir it up and mix it in and try to deal with it too. Let's let it go because we're so immersed in the wonderful awareness. The power of God is at work in my life. The promise of God says all things will work together for good. All things. And you want to hold on. Well, not everything. Yes, all things. Oh, not everything. Yes, all things. Oh, but there's still some things I believe are not going to work together for good. Oh, all things. And when you're immersed, you're like, oh, hallelujah. Everything is working together for good. You see how important it is? Because your inner thought is the director of your life. That inner consciousness is directing and moving your life. Because as you think, so you are. As you think, so you are. As you believe, so shall you receive. As you believe, so shall you receive. So when we understand this, we understand how important it is that we're totally immersed in this, that we're born again, that we're renewed, that we start this new experience, that we welcome a new thought, that we move beyond the physical into the spiritual, into the metaphysical, moving well beyond. And you know what? Here's the beauty of this passage that we've read today. I know God and what God does is what this phrase is saying in Jesus' words. And what God does, I can do. How many of you are familiar with that phrase, like father, like son, you know? Well, we could say like mother, like daughter. We could say like parent, like child. But we are familiar with that phrase, uh, like father, like son, and we use it quite often. Maybe sometimes to say, oh, you know, your dad's crazy, your son's crazy. You know, your son's crazy, well, it's because his dad's crazy, you know. There's that old uh, dad, aren't you going ready to, getting ready to go to work today, to the office? And dad says, oh, I'm working from home today. Get ready uh, soon, son, because you're going to be late for school. And the son says, but dad, I'm not going to school today. Why, says the dad? I'm like you. I'm studying from home today. You see, like father, like son, we make all these excuses and we find it over, repeated over again, sometimes in not necessarily the most positive context. But today, it's in the very positive context that Jesus is saying, whatever the father does, I can do. I can do it. Whatever the source does, I can do. Whatever God does, I can do. God loves, dagnabbit, I can love too. All right. God forgives well, you know what? I can forgive too. God generously blesses. Well, hallelujah, I can generally bless, generously bless too. God cares. Wow, I can care too. God is merciful. I can be merciful too because whatever God does, I can do. Because the, whatever the Son is doing, it's because it's seen and understood that the Father, the source is doing. And when we understand this, we understand that very concept that all that the Father does, the Son likewise does. Now you are sons, no matter your gender. So let's say you are sons and daughters. You are children of God. And whatever is divine, whatever is good, whatever is powerful, whatever is magnificent, you can do too. If you're open, if you're willing, if we understand this, we understand then that Jesus had an incredible authority. And that's what he said to those who came against him. I have an authority. 
Jesus, being our great example, shows us too that you have an authority. You have a wonderful authority. And we often will question Jesus' authority. And sadly, we question our own authority in that process. We wonder, could Jesus have really done these things? In the same context, we wonder, can I really do anything? Do I have any authority? Do I have any power? Is there really anything there for me? But let me tell you this today. This text is a symbol of your elder brother, Jesus, the master teacher, trying to teach you something. That it is like father, like son, like source, like child, like parent, like son or daughter. It is there for you. It's there for you to claim. Now, how wonderful it is. When we awaken to this wonderful thought, we claim this power, we claim this authority, and now we are moving, immersed in a consciousness, immersed in awareness, immersed in enlightened. We are the Christ. We are the revelation then for the world to see. We are walking in the light, and the light is the light of God, and we're moving in a world, bringing about transformation, for it's happening in our own lives. And as a result, it's transforming the world around us. Today, the question is, are you ready to follow Jesus' teaching? Like Father, like Son, it's yours. Amen.